Welcome to the video presentation of CEST Imaging for Canon Medical and Olia Medical Sponsor Symposium. Today we would like to present you the basics of a really promising molecular imaging technique called CEST MRI, nowadays available on clinical 3Tesla MRI scanner, and show you interesting clinical application that will demonstrate its role in tumor grading and EDH mutation prediction in brain gliomas. My name is Stefano Casagranda and I'm a senior research and innovation engineer at Olia Medical. I'm also leading the development of the CEST products at Olia. First of all, the work I'm going to present for this educational presentation was done in the framework of Clint project, where Olia Medical was one of the partners. This project was a Horizon 2021, aiming to develop new cancer diagnostic tools using innovative biomarkers from CEST imaging and it was done with leading research universities and companies such as University College London, University of Turan, Max Planck Institute, Braco Imaging, University of Zurich, Tel Aviv University and the European Biomedical Imaging Research Institute. Chemical Exchange Saturation Transfer or CEST is a molecular imaging technique which provides access to a wide spectrum of unique biomarkers and its imaging principles involve chemical species or molecules which contain in their structure a hydrogen proton that can be exchanged with those of water. By applying a radiofrequency RF pulse at the resonance frequency, the chemical species of interest reach a saturation state. And at this point, their label excited protons are exchanged with the non-exciting proton of the water. As a consequence, the water signal slightly decreases. If this process is continually repeated through few seconds of RF irradiations, this leads to a buildup of saturation in water. And so the decrease of the water signal becomes visible. This is known as CEST effect. In CEST MR imaging, the saturation protocol is followed by fast acquisition sequences, such as single shot echo planar imaging. So, using the process of continuous resaturation and proton exchange, CEST can enhance the detection of certain metabolism that can be found in the human body, whose concentration won't be sufficient for being detected by the classic MRI imaging sequences. Their detectability is, for example, amplified by a factor of 100 if this exchange takes place 100 times. The chemical species of interest could be emit, amine present in peptides and protein or a hydroxyl group present in glucose. In the clinical domain, CES could therefore offer an interesting way to detect and characterize different lesions with altered metabolic properties such as tumors, ischemic tissues and multiple sclerosis. But in this presentation I will focus exclusively on tumor applications. So, what information can CES provide in this context? Well, First of all, due to a modification of the protein content, tumor cells have a higher concentration of mobile amide and the mine protons, which can be detected in vivo by chemical exchange and attenuation of the water signal, allowing imaging on a 3 Tesla clinical MRI scanner. This test application is called amide proton transfer, or simply APT. Another factor that must be considered is the nuclear Hoverhauser effect also called NOE effect. NOE is a type of cross relaxation pathway where spin polarization exchange takes place. This effect has been found to be an important additional biomarker for tumor characterization because while amide and the mine signals increase in the tumoral regions, NOE signal decreases to the loss of structure and protein unfolding in these lesions. In addition, Cancer cells are characterized by an alteration in glucose metabolism called the Warburg effect. In fact, they demand and consume this sugar much faster than their healthy counterparts. So the glucose S method is based on the measurement of the absorption of this unlabeled glucose by chemical exchange of labeled protons between hydroxyl groups and water. Finally, specific tumor cell mechanisms avoid excessive intracellular acidity to the Warburg effect, causing extracellular acidosis which lead to an average extracellular pH of uh, 6.5 to 7. So the acidosis method is capable of quantitatively measuring acidity using iopamidol, that is a iodine-based contrast agent. 
approved by the FDA for CT clinical examinations. So in this presentation, we are going to focus specifically on amide proton transfer cest. Endogenous cests such as APT or noise cest are the most common methods due to the absence of contrast agent administration. Also, APT is the most widely used high power saturation cest imaging to date. This is because through a high power saturation RF with a B1 around 2, 2.2 microtesla, this method enhances the saturation transfer of amide and the mine of peptides and protein, and suppresses other competitive effects, such as the nuclear overhauser enhancement or NOI effect. And these provide a stable signal on 3 tesla MRI clinical scanners. While NOI or low power saturation cest provide more biomarkers, but is more stable on 7 tesla or 9.4 tesla scanners. To extract the signal of the molecule of interest in APT cest, the ref saturation is not only applied the resonance frequency of this molecule, but numerous measurements around the water-specific frequency are acquired, and then normalized by a signal measured without a ref saturation, also known as S0. The purpose of this method is to overcome B0 magnetic field inhomogeneities issues that leads to a shift of the full SES frequency spectrum. With a proper mathematical interpolation, the so-called zeta spectrum or SES spectrum can be obtained work cell wise. The latter is then centered so that its minimum corresponds to the water frequency, performing a B0 correction, which is applied for every voxel. Furthermore, zeta spectrum can be also the noise, then be one corrected for an improved signal enhancement, but we won't enter in detail in this presentation. Uh, instead, we will focus on cest signal extraction. In fact, during the continuous application of RF pulses, other competitive effects take place together with the saturation transfer, such as the direct water saturation and magnetization transfer contrast. So, these competitive effects need to be neglected for a correct reading of the cess contrast and based on the supposition that the direct saturation and the magnetic transfer contrast effects are symmetrical with respect to the water frequency, the difference between the area of the resonance frequency of the molecule of interest, the label area here in red color, and the area that relies on the opposite zeta spectral location the reference in blue color is applied and is used to neglect their signal. This difference is also known as saturation transfer effect. Now that we have talked a little bit about the methodology of cest imaging and its post-processing, let's focus on the role of APT cest in multiparametric MRI. What information APT maps can bring in this context? So, multiparametric MRI in brain tumors is a powerful methodology for obtaining in-depth information for the structural and functional tissue features, guiding the different diagnosis and assisting the tumor staging. And this helps the radiologist to reach an accurate diagnosis. At the beginning of the project, Dr. Sotirios Bizdas, specialized in advanced oncology, and the clinical MRI scientist Laura Mancini started a prospective study on multiparametric MRI. They recruit several patients with a presumed primary grade 1 to 4 glioma, and acquisitions were made with a Siemens magneton prisma 3 Tesla. Their protocol consists of conventional anatomical sequences, perfusion techniques, diffusion techniques, magnetic resonance spectroscopy and APT cest. They have recruited more than 60 patients with 45 histopathological results available thanks to biopsy. So the population was confirmed to have glioma from 1 to 4 grade and different isocitrate dehydrogenase or EDH type. So with EDH all type, EDH mutant type with genes 1P and anti-Q retained, and mutant type with the genes 1P and anti-Q codeleted. And also knowing the information of EDH is fundamental for the patient prognosis. So to show you the study we did, 
I would like to present you the different maps of one patient of this population. Uh, the maps were processed by Oliasphere, and then I would like to show you the CES maps also processed by Oliasphere to see, to understand what is the role of APT in multiparametric MRI. Let's take one patient from this population. We have a 48-year-old male patient with a clinical history of non-migrant-like headache, followed with the two seizures during the last three months before the acquisition. And he had left leg and hand weakness, and he's a non-smoker without any previous chronic disease. In the tissue weighted and flare images, we can see a large space occupying mass within the right hemisphere. The mass shows cortical and subcortical infiltrations that extends into the deep preventricular white matter. The mass also shows a large central CSF field compartment that is visible on the tissue flare map and a rim of intermediate tissue signal which shows blood-brain barrier disruption on the post-contrast T1 weighted image. But the central part of the lesion does not demonstrate any convincing gadolinium enhancement. The ADC map on the left shows a central part in the lesion with a predominantly high ADC signal because of the cystis CSF field compartment. And then low ADC signal, which is in a special agreement with the gadolinium rim enhancement. These features are suggesting an aggressive growth pattern with hypercellular or tumor zone infiltration. And the relative blood volume map on the right from perfusion shows an increase intravascular blood volume on the tumor periphery. So the, the increased angiogenic activity grossly overlaps with the low AC ADC abnormalities, indicating again the most malignant tumor components and predicting a rather rapidly growing tumor. And CEST, and specifically APT CEST, what this methodology can provide for tumor characterization in brain. So, different studies have shown the correlation between APT signal and histopathological grades in brains, while others show the correlation between the emit signal and prediction with the age mutation status by Young et al., while another study by Yao et al. showed the correlation between amine signal and the prediction of the ADH mutation status. In our collaboration with UCL, we compute both AMID and the MIME map using APT weighted acquisitions. So let's start with AMID maps. So the map, if it's not B0 corrected, is not informative. So we need to perform a B0 correction using a B0 map that in this case was computed intrinsically using the smoothing spline method. And then we shift the zeta spectra with linear interpolation and center according to this B0 map to zero ppm. So we obtain a B0 corrected APT weighted map that is already informative. Then we add B1 correction using an RB1 map and acquiring different uh, acquisitions uh, at three different B1 to perform a B1 correction and then we perform uh, fly suppression for an increased reading of the saturation transfer effect contrast. After all the inhomogeneities correction, this is the APT cest map for this patient in AMID range. As we can see, the increased concentration of peptides through the visualized tumor tissue is superbly captured by the APT cest imaging and the contrast noise ratio is increased by the concurrent fly suppression, hence avoiding fast positive signal elevation. The distribution of the pathological peptic concentration 
the magnitude of which can be simply observed by comparing the signal to the normal appearing white matter show a distinct pattern that accompanies the non-enhancing and low ADC tumor part. Also confirmed in the enhancement given by the gadolinium in the T1 weighted image. While the rich in vasculature peripheral lesion components uh, that we can see in the perfusion map, in the set map have a lower peptide base signal. So the APT weighted image unravels the pathological metabolic alter substrate of the solid tumor part with a higher mobile proton and peptide concentration, but seemingly low or no gadolinium enhancement. The synthesis of the imaging evidence in this case suggests a highly heterogeneous intrinsic brain tumor with APTSS signal hallmarks of malignant available active tumor core and an aggressively expanding in terms of cellularity and vascularity tumor rim. These features are consistent with high grade glioma and the histomolecular diagnosis after tumor resection was consistent with the grade 4 EDH wall type glioma. Finally, I would like to show you other APT weighted maps from other patients of the multiparametric study performed by UCL. Here we can see three different patients with grade 2 gliomas and we can notice a lower cest signal in the tumor region compared to the previous patient of before that was grade 4. This patient has also different EDH type. On the left, there is an EDH wall type. On the center, EDH mutant 1P 90Q retained, and on the right, 1P 90Q codeleted. And we can notice three different patterns for these tumors. The central one, the mutant 1P 90Q retained, for example, has a hippo signal in the central area of the tumor, while the codeleted has an hippo signal on overall the region. Now, if we see the APT weighted maps from the same patients, but in, this time in the MIN range, we can notice difference compared to the previous map. But still, we can notice an EPO signal in the 1P19 QD codeleted and a EPO signal in the center of the 1P19 Q retained glioma. If again we take three other patients uh, with grade 3, this time we can notice again an EPO signal on the 1P19Q codeleted. And if we uh, change from amide range to amine range, we can notice also an EPO signal in the center of the 1P19Q retained glioma. In conclusion, to perform a statistical analysis on the APT weighted images processed by Olia Sphere, we uh, drawn a ROI in the tumoral area and another ROI in the complementary white matter. And we computed the statistics. In this uh, case, the average of the tumor and the average of the normal appearing white matter. And we did the difference of the two top TANA score. More information regarding the results of this specific APTS study are shown in two other ESMRM 2020 presentation this year in program 500 and program 3097. In these studies, we conclude that the ratio between the ROI analysis in a mid and a MIN signal is much more sensitive than the separate ROI signal in a mid and a MIN cest in differentiating gliomas with the best prognosis, EDH mutant 1P19 curetane, from those with the worst prognosis, EDH wall type. And, uh, in the hypothesis of amides and amines belonging to the same molecule, the ratio between APT in a, in a mid-range and APT in the amine range has been shown to be a measure of pH in glioma. To conclude the presentation, there will be an upcoming apt test post-processing product from Olia Medical that will be available at the end of 2020. So, if you are interested, you can perform your own APTSS study. To conclude, I would like to thank my colleagues and my collaborators from Glint Project. And to thank you for your attention.